Well, it's the first week of March and Linda and I are getting the trailer ready to go uh, on a little trip into the Rocky Mountains. It's the time of year when the grizzly bears are coming out of hibernation. So we have to give careful thought to proper self-defense in case we have a grizzly encounter. What you're about to see in this video is a rant from me that I shot about a year ago after getting news of a couple and their dog that were killed by a grizzly bear up in British Columbia. They emptied out a can of bear spray trying to defend themselves, but it didn't work. The reason I'm so upset in this rant is because people have been led to believe that if they just carry bear spray, they're gonna be, they're gonna be safe, that's all they need. I understand how you might not wanna carry a gun. Maybe you don't believe in guns. Maybe you're afraid of guns. Maybe you don't wanna carry the weight, but if you're carrying bear spray into grizzly country and thinking that's going to protect you, uh, chances are it's not. Anyways, sorry about the following rant, <laughs> but uh, here's what I had to say about that. The subject of this video today is bear spray and whether or not it's a viable form of defense for you to carry in the woods, should you be depending on bear spray at all? You know, Linda and I spend a lot of time, a, a lot of time, more than, more than most people in the wilds. Here in Nevada, we don't have grizzly bears. We do have black bears and we do have mountain lions and we're always carrying protection for that. In Montana, it's grizzly bears, wolves, mountain lions, black bears. We got it all up there. And we always carry protection up there too. I did a video on why I don't carry bear spray. And then this past week, we had a really unfortunate situation with two very experienced outdoors people, a husband and wife and their dog. They, their job was, in the, was uh, doing research in the, in the forests up in Canada. They've been doing this all their lives and they, they were both killed by a grizzly bear. They had emptied a can of bear spray trying to protect themselves. And it's been proven already that it doesn't stop a determined grizzly bear. So you might be thinking, well, it'll scare off a, a bear. Well, what, not if that bear is coming at you, not if that bear is attacking you. And a, and a grizzly bear, it will go right through that plume of bear spray and attack you anyway. In fact, it might just tick him off. You're better off with a firearm in the woods. And I did a video on that because I've been charged by a large sow. And uh, it, luckily, it turned out to be a bluff charge. And I didn't have to pull the trigger. But I was so glad I had a gun in my hand and not a can of bear spray. You know why? Because the wind was 20 miles an hour from the side of the bear coming at me. That bear spray wouldn't have done me any good at all. The thought that went through my head was, I don't want to have to kill this mama bear. And the second thought right after that was, I sure am glad this isn't bear spray. I didn't have to pull the trigger, but I was squeezing when that sow came to a big screeching halt. The thing is that so many people think that bear spray is the friendly way to go. Friendly to who? And then I see so many comments saying, well, you're in the bear's territory. Well, let me explain it to you this way. You and your wife go out to dinner in some part of a strange city or even your city. And you come out of the restaurant, you're making your way back to the car and a couple of thugs come up and grab your wife and drag her into an alley. Are you going to stand there and say, well, we're in their territory and not do anything? No, you have a right in this country to self-defense and you have a right to carry a firearm. Does carrying a firearm make you a bad person? No, it makes you a sensible person. Because how else are you going to defend yourself against insurmountable odds like a grizzly bear or a couple of gangbangers? What are you going to do? So am I out here in the wild animals territory? Well, yes, I am. It's also my territory. I live here. I live on this earth. You know, our forefathers, they always carried a rifle. They didn't go walking into the woods without a firearm. What's something else that people do today that they didn't, didn't do in the past? Now, I love backpacking. I used to do it when I was younger. 
And nowadays we have ultralight backpacking. And you crawl into a tent in, at night or you sleep out in the open and hope something doesn't come after you. What did they do in the past, though, to alleviate that problem? They kept a fire going all night. You had a, before you went to bed at night, before you laid down in your sleeping bag on the ground, you got a pile of firewood within arm's reach. And if you have to, you set an alarm, but you feed the fire all night. Because one thing that wild animals are afraid of is fire. And even the smell from the smoke makes them go the other way. That's a natural instinct. People don't do that anymore. They don't even make a fire. They cook on these little tiny stoves. Yeah, even as a kid, we kept a fire going all night. And when you have three people, one of them's doing fire watch. We would do four hour shifts, two people sleeping, one person staying up, enjoying the stars and tending the fire. That's how you stay safe. You don't just lay down in the woods or crawl into some flimsy tent and hope for the best. We don't camp in the woods in, in tents anymore. We stopped doing that many years ago. The grizzly bears have, their population has expanded profusely. There's so many of them now. Hard-sided campers only. Uh, I would love to be able to take my bike and, and go ride into the mountains and camp in a tent. I, I, I don't do it. It's just not smart. And I've had people say, well, I carry both. I carry bear spray and a firearm and I'll use one. And then if that doesn't work, I'll use the other. You don't have that kind of time when a bear charges you. You don't, that that charge that I got, <laughs> she came busting out of the bushes. I barely had time to get my firearm up and level that, or let alone think about, oh, should I try the bear spray first, or should I? I don't know. What? Wait, Mrs. Bear, what do you think? No, firearm first. Then, if the bear stops, you might be able to ease your bear spray out of its holster and try to scare the bear away that way if you want to try that. You can't turn around and run. They definitely, that triggers a, an attack response. And all you can do is kind of back away slowly and trip over the rock right behind you. Then you're really in trouble. So you got to think about that. So if you're thinking about carrying both, pull the firearm first. Well, I know this video was kind of harsh on my part and I'm sorry for that, but it just bugs me. So can we give up on the fallacy of bear spray? It doesn't work in all situations. You want something that works in all situations. That's a firearm. The best firearm you can get for bear defense and mountain lions would be a 12 gauge shotgun with slugs and double lot buck. That's what I carried in Alaska when I was flying up there. We didn't depend on anything else. Second to that is, is a rifle and third to that is a handgun. But even a handgun is better than bear spray. I guess my point is, don't go blindly into the woods. We didn't used to do that, so why are we doing it now with the growing population of wolves and grizzly bears? I'm out here where God intended me to be. I don't bother the wildlife. I don't expect the wildlife to bother me, but I'm not going to just let them kill me. <laughs> I'm going to protect myself while I'm out here. We'll see you around.